Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 11 video tutorial. Now today, as you already seen, we're going to be talking about blending two pictures together or some people refer to this as photo merging. Regardless of what you want to call it or how you want to approach it, it is blending pictures and you can see here where we have our subject, um, my wife here, and we blended her into a different background. Now this is very easy to do and I know a lot of you out there love to do this stuff because we always want to make our backgrounds more appealing to make our pictures more interesting. So the first thing you need to do is when you look at your picture notice where your light sources are. That's very important. I'll try to show you here with my mouse if I can uh, move this around a little bit. What you're looking at here is the light source seems to be coming here from the right and it's coming in across on top of these trees here down so I picked one of our pictures of my wife for that I took in the studio and she is facing to the right where she where it looks like the light is illuminating her that way the picture looks more pleasing and it looks natural that's what you want to do so how did we get to this point well let's go ahead and get started on this actual picture here Okay, so let's go ahead and three, two, one. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our editing then. Let's go ahead and revert this back. So now uh, she has gone out of the scene here. Let's go back to the actual picture that I took in studio. This is what I took in studio. Now remember, you have to think about your background when you're taking your studio shots when you're doing your your stuff if you're going to be doing this blending pictures or merging pictures to get the lighting on the right side of the person because the light was coming in from the right just like it is on that background so the first thing we have to do is get the person out of the background that they are currently in and there's 10,000 ways you can do this I'm going to show you one of the easiest ones that I found and you can use it or you can pick your own way later First thing we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate that background layer like we always do using Control or Command J. Once we do that, we're going to be working on layer one. So we can just shut the background layer off and work on layer one. We're going to go under Image, and one of my favorite tools in Photoshop Elements is called the Magic Extractor. So we're going to click on the Magic Extractor and bring that up. And the way the magic extractor works is you choose the foreground and the background. It's almost like using magic markers if you think about it. So here's your foreground brush tool and here's your background brush tool. And all you got to do is pick out which area is which. So let's go to the foreground first. And we're just going to go here and just start drawing on our person with our with our mouse. So you just click and draw just like using any anytime you use a brush and you can use the left and right bracket keys to make your mouse either larger or smaller or I should refer to it as brush right to make your brush larger or smaller all right let's go to the top here and we're gonna come across here down now you don't have to do an exact like we don't have to be right on the edge or anything what it's doing is looking for light and dark tones that's what this is, is uh, working for and it's looking to see the differences between those and since we shot this against a white background it does help a lot uh, if you have a busier background it's going to take a little bit more time to do the extraction but you can still do it don't think it's going to be that hard I mean where you don't want to I've done really busy busy backgrounds and I've extracted people out of those Next, we can just uh, kind of make some lines through here, some squiggly lines, just to tell them, like, well, we do want this, too. We don't have to color the whole picture in. Just kind of have to give it a little once over here. And I've been told many times that I even give it more than it actually needs. Just like so. Now, with that said, we're going to go up here, and we're going to now click on our background brush. And we're just going to start going on our background here. Now, if you want those hairs, the little hairs, and we're going to be working with those in a little bit. I'm going to show you some stuff about those. Uh, you would try to go around those as much as you can so it can try to determine the lights and the darks. 
But sometimes when the hair starts blending that closely together with the background, uh, you'll start to lose some of that, the strands of hair, but that's okay. The one big thing I always tell people when I'm blending pictures is the person that is going to be looking at this picture was not there when you took either one of them. So if you have to get rid of a strand of hair, uh, if you have to uh, delete a bird maybe that's flying through your scenery or something, you know, whatever, you can uh, very much work with that. So there you go, right like that. And again, we don't have to color in everything, but I do like to make sure it knows what the background is. I'm going to come down here towards the bottom of this left-hand side here and go right over here. Once you do that, all we have to do now is we're going to come over and click on Preview. And what it's doing, it's picking out all those different tones and the lights to the dark. And there you go. It's pulling an extraction for us. That's a lot easier than using the eraser tool and erasing that background or trying to figure that out or masking. or Like I said, there's a million ways to do it. This is probably the easiest one that I have found. Once we do that, let's click on OK. I'll just click on this background and just get rid of that selection tool. But you see there, it did a pretty nice job. Now, don't worry about, you can see where a little bit of graying hair is around your subject, around the hairline. Let's not worry about that right now. We're going to be working with that in just a short bit. What we're going to do now is go to Select. Well, we're going to make sure we click on the layer we want. We're going to go to Select All. And we're going to go to Edit and Copy. Now, watch, this is very simple. Click on the Other Picture. So we're clicking up here on the tabs and we're going to bring up our background. Click on edit and then paste. Now what's going to happen, a lot of people say, "Whoa, Jack, I made a mistake because it's too large. It doesn't look proportional to my background. That's correct. It may not. That's okay though because we are going to resize it. It comes up, the size tool, the move in the size tool is already there. Make sure when you start to resize this thing and you're pulling this down that right here at the bottom it says constrain proportions. The reason you want to do that is always pull from the corner. You're going to keep the person, you know, not make them too skinny or too fat or too tall. They're going to stay exactly as you shot it. So we're going to pull this down into our size that we would like to have. And you can move this around as much as you want. We're going to bring this up now because we're going to make it look like she was standing by this fence and actually shot the picture. Right about there. That's pretty good. I think we can live with that. So let's click OK or check the checkbox here or hit your Enter key. Now you see that we have her in that background. She's sized and everything's ready to go. Now we have to deal with this place where this little uh, bleed over here is from the background. Now I'm going to show you a way to do this that I do it that makes it look more professional. I'm sure there's a million ways to do it again. This is the way I like to do it. Click on this, layer one. <clears throat> and in your Photoshop Elements 11, you're going to see right here at the top, if you move your mouse across, there's new layer there's a uh, fill and adjustment layer, and then there's a add a layer mask. We need a layer mask. Click on your layer mask. Make sure your color palette over here for your foreground color is black. Grab a brush, and we're just going to start brushing over this. Now to do this correctly, hold your control key in or your alt key on your keyboard and use your scroll wheel and we can actually scroll this up. The reason we want to do that is so we can see what's going on, right? We want to be able to work with this. And then I'm going to hold my shift key down and I can use the little hand here and move this around. And we're going to just start painting over this area, allowing the background to come through while getting rid of some of that gray overtone. And this is where I was telling you earlier, if you get rid of some of her hair, don't worry about it. <clears throat> 
it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything at all. What we're doing here is this is the true art of blending a picture into the background. Now, years ago, I would have told you you could have used the, um, the blurring tool. We could have blurred it together. But this is a true way to actually get it because what you can do here is you can start to have some of strands of hair coming through your picture. And it looks like she was standing there. And you can see some of the green through the, some of the strands. But like I said, if you can't get the strands out, just cover them over. Once again, just keep going through here. If you get some of the strands out, like I said, it makes it look more natural. You can lower your brush size with your left and right bracket keys. And we can just go in here and we can take some of this out. That way it makes it look like her hair was kind of blowing in the wind, right? Makes it look kind of neat. Once again, folks, this is a very easy technique. Very easy to blend pictures nowadays. You know, back in the old days when you did with film and shot in the studios and you shot had backgrounds out there that you wanted to blend together, that took a lot more work. But today, it's pretty, pretty straightforward how we do things here. And again, we'll take some of this out here. Could even get rid of this. And you can go over your picture several times to make sure the... Uh, to make sure the illusion looks proper. Let's clean some of this up. And you can work with your opacity too, because I know a lot of you out there might be saying, Jack, we could lower the opacity and actually got more of the hair to come through. And you can, you can do that. <clears throat> the same here right by her shirt now you can see when I'm doing this here you can see now through that shirt look right onto the brown fence right there that's behind her and again I can just uh, mm -hmm. make this brush size smaller I could pull out some more of that hair right there. Make the brush size larger again and get on this side. It is time consuming. You have to take your time when you do this stuff to make it look realistic. I'm looking on that side. It's done. Then we'll go to our other side here. And you just work your way back up the other side. It's a very systematic way of doing things when you're working on blending pictures. You don't want to try to do it all at once. That's why I like blowing it up also because this gives me a chance to see around the picture here. It allows me to be able to work on small areas of the picture without taking too much of my, uh, you know, uh, too much. I call it data overload because you're seeing too much of the data and you're trying to process it at one time. You're better off to do it little pieces at a time. Same here to make this look more realistic and come in here. We can take some of this out of here, this white. Because this actually, this white here, believe it or not, that's the waterfall. That's what you're seeing through her hair right there. Exactly what that what you're seeing there. Around her face. Clean that up. Right there. So that's it. You know, take your time. And I'm sure you're going to come across this stuff here really well. And you, you two is going to, <clears throat> you're also going to be able to blend some really nice pictures together. Um, you know, this is a really good technique when you're doing anything like Christmas pictures, uh, Christmas cards, greeting cards. Um, we use this all the time. I mean, this is just wonderful. Senior pictures, because you can end up taking your senior, shoot them in your studio, and then put them in any background you want. Uh, and I know some of the people are saying, Jack, what about Green Screen Wizard? Yep, that's a great program also. If you have a green screen, it works really well. Um, I do use that also to uh, put people in my backgrounds. But, you know, if not, maybe you just took a picture outside the kids and you want to put them in another scenery. 
Once we have that done, we're going to go over here, click on our magnifying glass, and fit the screen. Or you can just right click on the picture itself and go fit on screen. Now you can see how we have the hair showing. You can see the water showing through the hair. So it's a more realistic edit at that point. Everything looks nice. Again, the light's coming in from the right, and the light in the studio is coming in from the right also. If you want to, this is up to you. If you notice, there's what we call catch lights in her eyes right here. If you want, you can go in there and actually get rid of those catch lights. That's easy to do also. With the content aware tool, you can come in here and we can actually go right over that. You can actually take that out. But you're going to have to click on her. Don't click on your mouse screen and do that. All right. Then we'll fit back to screen. You can see now those catch lights are gone. So that way those are not uh, affecting your picture whatsoever. So now it looks like she's just standing outside and you were able to actually uh, grab this particular picture. Folks, I hope if you've enjoyed this video tutorial, you'll go to my website, jackstechcorner.com and look at my training DVDs. You'll be very, very happy you did. There's a ton of Photoshop elements video trainings on there to help you even further along with your edits. You can do stuff like this and even more. There's hours of editing enjoyment on those DVDs. So stop over and grab yourself a copy today. If you're not subscribed to my videos here on YouTube, please click the subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a subscribe member. And please spread the word about my photo editing. I also have a live photo, uh, photography editing show or a photography show on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, just go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, and click on the live show. That's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Sunday morning. Thank you very much. And until next time, keep those cameras clicking. Keep the editors editing. And I'll see you back here very soon on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.